So now we're going to read the story, The Girl and the Wolf. Words by Katharina Vermet. Pictures by Julie Flett. For Ruby, Donis. For Emil, Autumn, and Sage. In loving memory of Dr. Greg Younging Marcy. The girl ran through the bush while her mother picked berries. She was helping, but mostly running. Don't go too far, her mother called. It's going to be dark soon. Okay, the girl said, but kept running. Suddenly, the girl looked up and couldn't see her mother anymore. She panicked and looked one way but didn't see her. She tried to calm down and looked the other way but still couldn't see her. Everything got quiet and dark. The girl felt cold and scared. She didn't know what to do. Out from between the trees, a tall gray wolf with big white teeth appeared. The girl was very still. What are you doing out here by yourself? asked the wolf. I lost my mother, she said. I can't see my way back. You must be scared, little one, said the wolf in a quiet voice. Yes, I am the girl told him. Do you know your way back? He asked. The girl shook her head. The wolf came up close and sniffed her. His wolf breath was hot and stank of meat. I think I know where you come from, little one, said the wolf but it is almost dark. You must be hungry. Yes, I am, the girl nodded, and her stomach rumbled. Do you know how to hunt? asked the wolf. The girl shook her head. What are you going to do? asked the wolf. The girl looked around. Everything was quieter and darker. The girl felt very cold and very scared. I do not know, she said sadly. Yes, you do, the wolf told her. Take a deep breath. Close your eyes, then look. What do you see? The girl did what he said. And when she opened her eyes, she saw something that made her feel better. I can eat those berries. They are safe to eat. The ones by the stream where the water is safe to drink. She pointed. That is good, little one, said the wolf. Let's go. The girl drank in gulps and ate two handfuls of berries. Now, what are you going to do? asked the wolf. The girl looked around. Everything was still quiet and pretty dark. I don't know, she said sadly. Yes, you do, the wolf told her. Take a deep breath, close your eyes, then look. What do you see? The girl did what he said, and when she opened her eyes, she saw something that made her feel better. The skinny trees over there, that's where we camped, the girl said with a big grin. The gray wolf nodded and smiled at her with his big white teeth.
The girl started walking, but was really running. She ran to the air that smelled like her family. She laughed out loud and looked to her side, but she did not see the gray wolf anywhere. She looked one way, but didn't see him. She looked the other way, but still couldn't see him. Just then, her mother appeared with her basket full of berries. Oh, my girl, her mother cried. I told you not to go too far. Mama, I was lost and a wolf helped me, the girl told her. Her mother was surprised. A wolf? Yes, the girl said. He was big and gray at first. I thought he was going to hurt me. Her mother smiled. Real wolves can hurt people, but I've heard old stories about wolves who help lost children too. The girl smiled. She was glad the wolf had been the helping kind. When they returned to their camp, the girl told everyone about her big adventure and her special wolf. That night, she tied tobacco in red cloth and left it at the bush's edge because she didn't know a better way to say thank you. Author's note. This is a completely made up story. The girl in her red dress and the wolf who isn't really scary came to me when I was reading a lot of European fairy stories. Ah, uh, you know the ones where the wolf is always the bad guy and gets run off or worse in the end. I don't know about you, but I found that unfair. And I thought of the other stories I had been told where the wolf wasn't just evil or hungry. That's where this story comes from. It is inspired by traditional stories, yes, but in no way taken from one. Tobacco is one of the four sacred medicines. It can be enclosed in a tie of cloth or simply given in thanks or to ask for something respectfully. In this story, the girl leaves it in thanks to the wolf for helping her because it really is the best way I can think of to say thank you, Miigwech. Thank you to all the storytellers who have let me listen and have taught me many things over the years. Thanks too to Greg for pulling this one out of the pile of forgotten stories, to David for giving it the once over and especially to Julie for making this little story truly come alive. Special thanks to all the young persons I have had the honor to sit with and to learn from. And you lead the way, dear ones. Merci, merci, chi miigwech.